tough. I wish I could have done this over today. Uh, one thing I would have done, I probably would have brought a ball that was closer to my access point mm -hmm. to get it to roll and then just let my hand do the carrying. Uh, I never really got my ball to roll all day. It either would hook or slide. It didn't roll very well. Right. Um, I was a little surprised to see that you kept it. Uh, now, I know in the last game you kind of moved left and uh, got some loft on the lane, but uh, something that a lot of people brought into play, and especially uh, if you watch Cummings here on this first shot on 20, he's been doing it all day, really getting it out on the lane and clearing the heads. Not, not far enough left where he's got to loft the gutter, but... Just getting his ball to the head pin. Exactly. Yeah, he, he's throwing it really well right now, and um, I'd expect him. I mean, he just had what 270 or uh, 290. That's a very handy Vera pop of 300 right there for him. Yeah, uh, he's, he's gonna have a big game here. Yeah, it looks uh, looks that way. I would wouldn't see any reason to think otherwise. It's gonna be a high scoring event, and. What's interesting about this one, we were talking about it, is that not only are they have they run the ladder to this final match, but going into the last game, they were in sixth place, and they shoot 480, 489 to make it into qualifying for fourth, and they have just been on a run since probably game six, just going up the ladder, up the ladder, and here they are sitting in the final match. Yeah, they're working really well as a team, and Scott is on fire right now. You just saw him leave the 3-9 there. Uh, that's the first time I've seen him miss the pocket in the whole step ladder. Right. And uh, this this not a gimme on a on the spare, especially with this condition with that 3-9 in the back. Um, Absolutely. He has a higher speed, so he has to rely on the ball to hook into the pin. Uh, it's very easy to chop that. There it is, though. That's, uh, that's what we're looking for, and we are all even after the first one. Do we want to say it after the first frame that there's a there's a possibility of? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but what's funny is there's that there's a possibility to tie. <laughs> is that uh, in in honor of last week's tournament, uh, being that we were asked the pattern for probably a couple times a game, I made an exclamation point pattern for you. So now they they just got a link to the Big Ben, you know, just in case they they ask what pattern they're throwing on. Yeah, it's 44 yeah. feet, um, majority forward oil. Especially on this surface, it played a little tighter in the middle than I thought. Right. Um, I think a lot of bowlers could have used more surface. I'm actually anxious to see, or I was anxious to see, what would have happened if people would have thrown urethane. I think urethane I, outside would have worked really well today, and I did not bring a urethane ball with me. I called it at the beginning of the day. I'm looking at this pattern, and I go, um, people are going to transition. I, I called it in the first game, and like, people are going to transition into throwing urethane moving right throughout mm -hmm. the day. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, Ryan was in the, uh, the booth with me, and we were kind of talking about it. And, uh, yeah, we were surprised that it never never really happened. It, it would have been worth the look. You know, you would have had a chance just to play in the dirt, throw it hard, get to the pocket, and hopefully you carry. Where you're leaving, I saw a lot of bowler, especially, you know, in my own game. Mm -hmm. I left a lot of 2A10s, 2-4A10s today. I probably left about nine of those yeah just to where i thought my ball was going to roll perfect and it just really didn't get there mm -hmm. if i could have played closer to the pocket straighter angles it, it, i think it would have worked better your thing would have been a great way to go right yeah we uh we saw a lot of bowlers today make shots and then they kind of just uh, uh tim Barron, for example on uh 17 and 18 makes a shot and he he thinks it's pure it off his hand and he le stuck leaving uh two four eight just kind of looking and then he goes down on uh one and two or three and four somewhere around there and it's just poking off his hand you know and he's just like i don't know i thought i threw it good like and uh pete did the same thing that uh that very game on 17 18 or 19 20. yeah there, it was the type of bowling today you either had it you really didn't have it i mean you're gonna have good games and bad games. my high game today was 235 i didn't think i threw it uh -oh. terrible but I saw guys that had five games higher than me. Right. They just com completely mauled the field. Yeah, it was It was not only about uh, about hitting the pocket, getting to the pocket, but figuring out a way to carry those nine counts. Uh, I saw so many people just hitting hole but not making that change to to get that, that uh, nine count out. Yeah, you finally get it to the pocket and you leave a nine pin, or just like you saw Jerry there, leave a ten pin, pretty good shot ball didn't really get to the pocket as well as he needed it to but strike nine spare hopefully nine spare this time right. um, we'll see what Dave does here yeah that uh that's a big open in the second frame early especially in the step ladder finals absolutely and that, like we said you know you see him sit there for 
I mean, I'm sure they've sat there for an hour now. Right. After an hour of waiting, does it benefit you or does it not? Some people can come out and bowl really well. We'll see what happens. Good spare. So kind of a kind of an odd leave for Cummings over there on the right hand lane, leaving a four eight coming in just a little bit light. It seems like the misses that he has had today has been the shots that he gets in a little bit and it, it kind of wiggles down lane and really backs up at the head pin rather than making that little bit of the turn that he has to have to get that carry. Yeah, just to get it to the head pin enough to where a light mixer. Um, he left a bucket earlier in his other match, almost a bucket there. Good shot for Zamowski. Yeah, coming back, that's a, that's a good shot right there. You're always told if you leave an open, you got to throw a double to make up for it. Right, right. And this is a big shot right here for Pierce, too. And Beautiful goes ball. up and absolutely pures it. So bringing back his, his partner right there, going into the fourth frame. Looks like we got a 20 pin match. Yep, 20 pins. And something uh, that we noticed throughout the day today, uh, even though there was a 300 thrown on this, this pair by Chase Rhodes. But overall, the the out of the three pairs that we had for live stream, this was definitely by far the lowest scoring pattern that we had, or lowest scoring pair that we had on the live stream today. Yeah, I think I shot a 180 over there. I just couldn't really get the the left lane down. The left lane was pretty tricky for me, and I'm kind of seeing that now. You know, Jerry wraps a 10 pin there on that lane. Um, it just a lot of nine counts on this pair. Another nine right there for Jerry. Man. And good shots too, and that's what we were talking about is not only carrying and getting the nines, but carrying the or not only getting to the pocket, but carrying the nines too. I'm a little worried seeing them, all these clips that we had. And the fact that I could not uh couldn't couldn't say the beyond word after that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try it again. It's been a long day. <laughs> what time did you get here today? Uh, so I got here about 7:30, but I didn't get out of here until like 1:30. So it was a uh, really yeah, it was a long, long day. All right, so big double right here, possible for and a whole height mixer. That's not the carry that we've been noted that we've been seeing Pierce get, but that is yeah. uh he's been pretty flush in the pocket almost every game and. Now it's looking like his ball's just getting a little further down the lane, but it's still making the turn to get the pins to go his way. Right. Zamowski. Oh, oh my gosh. Pin. So great shot for him, but just not getting the carry that he's got to have this final game. And not only that, but he's got to make the spare here. This is uh, this is getting, uh, getting to the point of not a runaway, but pretty close yeah and, you know they've had eight shots so far this game and they've had six nine counts so definitely section uh set you back there but that nine count miss and the second frame was a big big hole right see if jerry can get his ball to get through the pins a little bit better and i know that uh that cummings and pierce just just from knowing them oh. they're getting to the point where they're they're, they're pretty reserved right now at the beginning, but once they get to the point where they're loose and pumped up and ready to go, like I, I'm, I can almost guarantee you that Pierce is going to have like a yeah eventually. At some yeah, point they here. work really well together. Right. They really do. You see them uh, bowling close to each other. If you see them bowling close to each other, they're usually working off of each other. And yeah, feeding off the energy, you know. And it looked like Jerry, you know, he left that 10 pin, the 10 pin on the other lane. And then on this lane, he may have made a, a small move right. And but then he almost leaves a 4 great, 9. That was a great shot. And it's almost like uh, we were talking with Mark Hood earlier. Uh, and he was in the first match. And on the left hand lane, he goes light, light, makes the move high, and they're all nine spares. Then he goes strike. And then he, what does he do? He gets up there on the left lane again and leaves an 8 pin. I mean, there's just some points where. No matter what the move you make, it's it's uh -oh. oh no. That's all that's trouble. That is the three six seven nine. Looks like he just got a little firm at the bottom, ball didn't really pick up on the lane and uh, he leaves a big hole split. Zamowski answers back with the strike. Right there. So that closes the gap a little bit, but still still a lot of work to do and let's keep an eye on this shot right here. This could be a pretty good attempt. 
He's going for it. Oh, he he's going it. for it and converts the three six seven nine. What a great, absolute clutch today. He picks the six eight last match. He picks that this match. I mean, that's what you won your anchor bowler. That is what uh, championships are won by. You know? right. That's how you win championships, right there. And first place today is two thousand dollars. Two thousand uh, dollars. I kind of I don't know if you heard it or not when they were making the announcement, but but they had 35 teams in today, but they paid it like there was 36. So they did pay top nine teams, uh, one and four, and then they're paying $2,000 for first on a $220 entry. That's awesome. So we uh, we almost got to max. We were at uh, 36 would have been max, 35 is what we got to. So close enough for me. That's on over. So that's what gets me. And I said this earlier and it's it's gonna sound bad. I know it is. This is my opinion. Warwick, STL, Ricky Matsker, whatever you want to say. But St. Louis actually got 35 teams of doubles on a sport pattern over and under 50s. That is like I just don't understand how that happened. But yeah, that is it's, it's starting to come around, man. It's cool. It it, it really is. And uh, seven or oh, ten. That is just, I mean, it's it, every game has been a, a factor of just a little bit of carry over the other team. And Eric has had, Eric and Jerry have both, or uh, Sismo and, uh, and Dwiggins have had uh, shots in the pocket and just not carrying. Every shot has been a nine count for them, and they're both sitting at four nine counts each. And Dave's found a way to get his ball to carry. Um, he's actually working on a turkey right now. So right. he's basically the deciding factor in this match. And he's really got that light pusher, you know, just that, that it's not really a mixer. It's more the pins are just kind of pushing into each other and uh, kind of fading the pocket, just letting the, the pins work together, right. keeping them low and making a mix. Jerry Duggins, another there's, strike. There's the carry right there that Jerry has to have. And, I mean, going into the seventh frame, looks like it's a it's almost a 50-pin difference right now. So it seems like we've been going into the seventh and eighth frames kind of hoping for, or not hoping for, but the other team is hoping for something drastic to happen because a huge gap between the two two teams right now, but they're just not stopping. Yeah, when you leave the nine counts like uh, Jared Riggins and Eric Zamowski, you really hope your other, your opponent actually misses, but in this case, I don't really see them light, you know, them letting up. And there is a 3-7 left by Sismo. Yeah, that is, uh, the end is uh, is pretty near right now unless something something crazy happens. Yeah, he has to convert this to even have a chance. There's another seven pin. So that's the first shot of this match, I believe, that was under under a nine count. Mm. Oh, no, the, uh, Dave left the 4-8. Uh, the Cummings left the 4-8 and the third. So Eric has a possible 204. If he can strike out, he's pacing 180, 160 depending on what he can do. It's fair. Yep, that's fair right there. And yeah, they don't they don't really need much, really. A couple strikes and it's pretty much wrapped. Yeah. I mean, not to take anything away from, from the teams of uh, Cummings and Pierce or Twiggins and uh, Sismo there. They, uh, they have bowled absolutely amazing today to get to this point. I mean, we were talking about uh, Cummings and Pierce going from sixth to fourth in the final game. I mean, it's the typical part-time bowlers tour where someone from sixth, seventh, and eighth makes the step ladders. And not only that, but fifth and sixth place actually both made step ladders today, which is un unheard of in that last match. Yeah, they made a big jump, and they, they're uh, proving that they were supposed to be there. And I think that it was a it was a really big advantage for them uh, the fact that the first step ladder match was actually on the pair that they finished their uh, qualifying on, but at the same time they haven't touched 17, 18, or 19, and 20 in who knows how long. So it's this uh, they kind of came into this blind, and I feel like um, I feel like Jerry and uh, Eric were both in the same boat as well, where they. They threw at least the last two games, maybe the last three games down on the, the low end, so they haven't seen this end in, uh, in quite a bit. 
Yeah, it's a big confidence booster when you win your first match, especially when it's on a lane you just came off of. Right. And they've just rolled that momentum into this, uh, actually the other two matches, and now they're here. They're here, and they're about to uh, to get $2,000 for the win today, plus a part-time Bowlers Tour title. You can see the the banners in the background here. Uh, each have their, their name in the back, and... It's kind of cool. Uh, Ray and I grew up bowling, bowling the gateways, and that's what you wanted to do was win your gateway so that you got your, your little banner, and uh, they hang it at every tournament. And it's kind of cool to see the tradition. I mean, I guess it started with the PBA. You know, they did that, and then it, uh, it progressed from there. But Yeah, you want to have a banner. All right, right. You want to walk in and see that. Man, and... Hats off to, to Dwiggins. He's put every ball in the hole this game, and he's staring at three strikes total. That's just a lot of nine counts. A lot of not, all nine counts. Yeah, six of them. Too bad it's not a nine pin no tap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a game of inches, and when you're not hitting the right inch, it, it can play a big factor in what you're going to do. Right. Oh yeah, that is a that is a good point. Out uh, Dwiggins' banner is on lane number 18, right next to him. Maybe we should have had the finals there. Gosh, that, that would have been his pair. And, man, shout out to, to Dave Cummings, too, in this final step ladders. He has been absolutely solid for the whole time. I mean, I, I don't think that he has opened this, the last two, three games. Been very clutch. And um, Mark was saying that he injured his knee in, like, game four. Uh, it's swollen right now and said it's, like, the twice the size that it should be. And uh, heard Dave walk off the approach and say, there it is right there. That's the reaction. Yep. Was Dave, just giving, he's giving it the old stick and flick right now. <laughs> and it's, it's working fantastic for him. Now, did you uh, – I know that it was raining earlier, and I don't know if it is now, but did you notice uh, any Absolutely. difference? Absolutely. Yeah. The approaches were tacky, yes. Yeah. And that's just uh, something that happens with the uh, with the weather that happens. Um, yeah, just your your hand changes, your footing changes, just everything changes uh, depending on the weather. Yeah, you lose your leverage. You know, you'll hit up on the ball. It's it's definitely something you need to work on. If you can't get to the line properly, you're not going to make the best shot you can. So, right. Um, I'm actually going to go back and practice probably throwing in a tennis shoe for a couple days maybe yeah just so if i get on approaches like this i can still make those shots i i believe that you know for me I, I had a problem with the approaches today but it's not a factor as far as me not performing to my best but right but still you uh you want to make I, sure that yeah. you prepare for something i know uh i know the last th i guess three years that i bowled at the peterson um i actually had to implement a plant method because I couldn't slide, you know, I just had had no slides. So uh, that, I actually that, that will do it to you there for sure. I actually went to uh, to a six step approach when I'm normally five and uh, planted at the line, and you it's just something that I same thing you'll see at uh, nationals when the new lanes out there. They, they usually are a little tackier. Um, right. St. Louis with all the humidity we have, most of the bowling alleys they they get tacky approaches in the summer. So yep. Uh, I definitely usually have two bags, one for the winter around here and one for the summer, and I have not drilled my summer equipment yet. <laughs> so uh, that would have been something to do before today. Right, right. I mean, these guys are just, they're, they're bowling fantastic. I mean, it took it took over 2.30 just to make the step ladders. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great performance. And that's where people have a misconception about how shot and sports shot. Uh, the, the pattern played very true today. Mm-hmm. Just because it's not a St. Louis wall, quote unquote, you can still strike on it, and these guys right. proved that today. It took 2:30 a man to make it into the finals. Yeah, and I mean, not not only just 2:30, but this is a doubles team that it took 2:30 each of you to to get there. That's just that's a that's a lot, right? That's a lot. Yeah, my high game was 2:35, so that tells you a lot. <laughs> Oh. oh, I thought we were going to get the carry on that last one, but That's a match. That's over. Yeah, it looks like 471 if Pierce <coughs> converts the spare right here to Boy, they may be Yeah, in the 420 410s. Yeah. Yep. No, not even 40s. 
So it was a it was a it was a rough match. I mean, like we said, it's all a game of carry. And when you have how many is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, nine counts, just for Twiggins and uh, Sismo over there. Yeah, and they could they could have easily had a run of that match. You know, a couple bad breaks there, but right. That's the way bowling goes. Yeah, sometimes you just uh, one one thing that I like uh, from from Brad and Kyle. Someday you're the uh, dog, and some days you're the hydrant. <laughs> yep. And that's uh, that's what the carry is. Absolutely. Let's. Uh, Oh my gosh, of course. Uh, <laughs> and there is uh, Tubbin on the on the mic. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, end this up. 